Thanks, Madam Speaker. This government has failed to look after the cost of living concerns of Australians. But I think that the question underpinning this, the question I think on the minds of a lot of Australians now, is, is Tony Abbott the worst Prime Minister Australia has ever seen? In fact, is this the most disappointing Liberal government Australia has ever seen? And in order to support that proposition that Tony Abbott is the worst Prime Minister Australians have ever seen, I would submit for the consideration of the parliament and indeed the Australian people rising unemployment. We had this Minister for uh, Education you know, giving a reasonable impersonation of that famous Iraqi communications minister, Comical Ali, saying that employment was a great argument to justify this government. Well, 100,000 people extra on the unemployment queue really shows what's happening in this country. It's not just unemployment which is a problem for this government, but more importantly a problem for Australians. We've seen 11 million Australians have their superannuation payment levels frozen. We've seen $100,000 degrees on the table. Only this misfit Liberal National Government could propose deregulation of university and the outcome will be higher prices and fewer people going to university. We've seen them say that they're going to be the government for Indigenous Australians, but they've cut half a billion dollars in funding, including very important funding in terms of community legal aid. And Australia has one of the most shameful rates of Indigenous incarceration. Of course, we've seen this government and all of the ministers, not just the current Prime Minister, but all of the contenders for his job, queue up and say absolutely resolutely they support the $80 billion cuts to hospitals and schools contained in that budget. Pensioners have suffered under this government with a cut to their rate and indexation proposed. We've seen this nation go backwards on climate change. We see the propositions that the cost of living pressures, $6,000 cuts to family payments. We see this government cutting childcare by a billion dollars, including very important family daycare programs. So that is a significant list of failure by this government. This government loved to lecture the opposition, say they're interested in what real Australians are interested in. Well, I tell you what, real Australians are concerned about rising unemployment, the demise of much of our manufacturing, the extra slugging of pensioners, the GP tax, the $100,000 degrees, the $6,000 payments for families, not to mention the heinous cuts to education and health care. But just in case people thought that this was the worst government and this was the worst Prime Minister we've ever seen last week, then we had this week. We've got more leaks than the Titanic coming from the government. We've got propositions from the government where they're leaking against each other, saying that some people did or didn't support the GP tax, although they all support the GP tax. We've had leaks coming about uh, even the Attorney General, hardly notorious for his judgment, warning the Prime Minister that the Prime Minister was playing with fire when he was politicising national security. Far better from the opposition to accuse the Prime Minister of politicising national security. But indeed, the Attorney General perhaps proving that a stop clock can be even right twice a day, maybe he was on to something. But not only do we have the leaks from within the government, we've got the uh, ultimate bunker busters coming from the Prime Minister's enemies in the Liberal Party. We've got to meet this fellow, the Treasurer of the Liberal Party. He seems to have a lot to say for himself. Emails his pre preferred version of political violence upon the Prime Minister. But what I'm really interested in is to see if there's any more emails coming from this Treasurer of the Liberal Party. If the Treasurer of the Liberal Party won't even back the, his own Prime Minister and warns there are severe problems in the government, how on earth can the rest of Australia believe this is not the worst government ever? And of course, though, we've got the Prime Minister being valiantly supported by his great band of allies. I refer, in case you don't know who I mean, to his front bench. The Foreign Minister is doing more morning TV shows than Kerry Ann Kennelly. We've got the uh, Minister for Backbench Communications. Of course, there's uh, Scott Morrison. The less said, the better. But then we see, I think, even more seriously than some of the uh, undermining of the Prime Minister from within his ranks, the deluge of leaks, the tsunami of leaks. We see the public health scandal, which is this inadequate government's inadequate handling of berry contamination. It should not take 10 days for this government to decide to test 100 per cent of these berries coming from, uh, the, coming from this region of the world. It should not have taken 10 days. 
Twice we've asked the Prime Minister this week in question time, since he's apparently got his finger on the pulse of what's going on in Australia. We said to him, we said to him how many Australians have been exposed to contaminated berries? How many? He doesn't know. This, this hero of our borders cannot tell us how many hundreds of thousands of Australians have potentially been exposed to contaminated berries. But it gets worse than that. He can't tell us how many people potentially will contract hepatitis A. He can't even tell parents of school children in Queensland, South Australia and Victoria whether or not their children have been exposed. This is a delinquent government asleep at the wheel. But not only the berries and the leaks the problems, we've got the ongoing strategic shocking saga of the submarines. We have got somehow a $20 billion or $30 billion contract being promised on the back of an envelope for a couple of tawdry South Australian Liberal votes. This is a disgrace. Now, I actually agree with what the member for Gray said. He's, uh, that's the Rowan Ramsey, for those not familiar with him. He's, um, he said that uh, what is important is that these holes— no, he's a good man, and I agree. I'm going to quote the good man's words in the Liberal Party meeting room. Uh, he said it was important that these holes are welded in Australia. Oh, yes, they are. And we will agree to support that proposition. But again, we've got the whole jumping through the hoops of what a competitive tender is. What did Kevin Andrews mean? What did David Johnson promise? Where is David Johnson? <laughs> but I have to say, I have to say though, that what has shown that this is the worst, most cynical government we've seen in Australian history, with the worst, most cynical Prime Minister in Australian history, was his attitude today, saying no one really cares if I bully and intimidate. The President of the Human Rights Commission. Australians aren't interested in that. What a thug. What a bully. I understand that when you were the Prime Minister of Australia, it is a marvellous pulpit to articulate a vision for the future. It is a great opportunity to lead this nation in the necessary debates it has. But it is not a pulpit for bullies. It is not a pulpit to intimidate and harass and put undue pressure on an independent statutory office holder. Those pictures yesterday told a thousand words. The pictures of Gillian Triggs, independent president of the Human Rights Tribunal, Parliament president of the Human Secretary. Rights Tribunal, sitting two people down from her assassin, her boss in one way, the Attorney General George Brandis. It defies credibility, members of the government, that when you have someone who's independently appointed for a fixed period of time, that when a powerful secretary, on instructions to be fair, from an even more powerful attorney general, working at the behest of the most powerful man in Australia, comes to you and says, we have no confidence with you, but by the way, we can find you a suitable appointment in some other capacity, that is an inducement to resign. That is a most inappropriate form of conduct. And sure, this cynical government can say we don't care and it doesn't matter and no one cares. And when you're in trouble, you know, break glass and bring out comical Ali, Christopher Pine, to have a crack. The truth of the matter is it is much more serious. We understand that we must support our independent statutory office holders. Which judge is next? Who is next going to feel the weight of Tony Abbott's anger and wrath? What on earth did Gillian Triggs, Professor Gillian Triggs, respected jurist, respected President of the Human Rights Commission do to deserve an outlandish attack from this Prime Minister. Yesterday in question time, the Prime Minister, yesterday in question time, the Prime Minister made a most undignified, unedifying assault. This worst Prime Minister Australia has ever seen. Fresh from wrecking the confidence of Australian business, fresh from causing mayhem in his unfair budget, launched, I thought, the worst moment of his political career, when he launched that unedifying attack from the powerful position of the most powerful man in Australia, the head of the executive branch of Australia, when he used the full authority bestowed on him by the Australian people to attack this individual president for writing a report he didn't like, for introducing the independence of the Human Rights Commission. I know, and Australians are reminded, that we have a Prime Minister who is unfit to be the Prime Minister of Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is psychologically unsuited for the task of leadership. Yeah. He cannot restrain his anger at, the, at people who disagree with him. Of course, many have felt his wrath. The advocacy groups, the climate change, the economists, unions, you name it. This Prime Minister attacks all the backbenchers. This Prime Minister, Malcolm Turnbull, everyone has felt his wrath. But the most serious point of poor old Whip, Mr Ruddick, but the real issue here 
is we have a Prime Minister not focused on the needs of ordinary Australians. He is an arrogant, cynical Prime Minister whose government is taking Australia in the wrong direction, Order, and it needs to stop.